Hey, let me begin today by asking a very simple question. What kind of belief do you have in Jesus? Is it an intellectual belief? Is it an inherited belief? Or is it an intimate belief, a life-changing belief that Jesus is who he says he is? You know, in the year 1860, there was a man who basically said, I want to be great at something. His name is William Hunt. And he noticed he wasn't a very good athlete. He wasn't a great musician. But he did have a unique ability to walk on very narrow things. He had great balance. And so he decided, if I'm going to be great at anything, certainly it's going to be with my balance. He decided one day that he wanted to be the greatest tightrope walker in the history of the world. And so he worked every single day on the tightrope. He would walk across his backyard on a rope. He would walk across major city streets on a tightrope. But there was a day that he decided, I want to do something that nobody's ever done. And if I'm going to be the greatest of all time, I'm going to have to set a world record. And so he began to work on how to accomplish a great feat, something that's never been attempted ever. So he hired a publicist and he hired some different people. And they were able to arrange this opportunity to walk across Niagara Falls in upstate New York on a tightrope. Now, you can imagine at this particular time in American history, that was something that's never been dreamed of, never been thought of. And here is this man walking across a tightrope, Niagara Falls, the scariest thing that's ever been done. There wasn't a safety net. And everybody knew that this man, if he falls, is going to fall to his death. The publicist's job was to bring a crowd and to make sure that the people were aware of what was going to be attempted on this particular day. And so he told the newspapers and he told the press that this man named William Hunt was going to make this attempt. But it didn't make sense to call him William Hunt, so he created a new name that he went by on that particular day, the Great Farini. He wanted to be known as the Great Farini because greatness was something he wanted to identify who he was and what he accomplished. And so the day finally arrived, and he appeared, and over 2,000 people were there to experience this great feat. He addressed the crowd before ever making the attempt, and he just thanked them for being there. He said, thank you so much for being here. We're going to experience history together, and I want to thank you once again for believing in me. At that point, he put his shoes on, and he was escorted to the rope, and one step after another, William Hunt, the great Farini, made his way all the way across Niagara Falls and all the way back without stumbling or falling. Now, as you can imagine, once he arrived back on the ground, the people started to applaud and to cheer. They were going crazy. They had just experienced history. The great Farini was also very excited. He addressed the crowd and he said, thank you once again for coming. We've experienced history together today. We've just seen a world record take place, and I want to thank you for believing in me. Now, as the crowd started to disperse, you can just imagine him saying, you know what? We've gone to all this work and we've made all this effort to have this one great attempt. What if we take it to another level? And so he gathered the crowd back together and everybody came once again. And he said, hey, I want to try something else that's never been attempted before. He said, how many of you believe that I can walk all the way across and all the way back once again without stumbling or falling, but only this time do it blindfolded? And as you can imagine, there was a hush that went across the crowd. But then finally someone said, I believe in you, Farini. I believe you can do it. And then one person after another started to affirm that person's comments. You can do this, Farini. And finally he raised his hand to silence the crowd and he said once and once again, thank you for believing in me. He put on the blindfold and then he put on a second blindfold. Someone escorted him to the wire and he then went all the way across and all the way back without stumbling or falling. Two different world records in one single day. The crowd went crazy. He went crazy. He thanked everybody for coming. And right when they started to disperse again, he thought, you know, why don't we take this one step further? So he gathered everybody together again. He said, we've experienced two things today that the world's never seen. But what would you say if I said we could take it one step further and break a third world record today? The crowd was waiting in in anticipation until finally he broke the silence and he said these words. He said, how many of you believe that I can walk all the way across and all the way back without stumbling or falling once again, blindfolded with two blindfolds, and this time do so while carrying someone on my back? 
How many of you believe I can do this while carrying someone on my back? And when he said those words, as reported by historians, they say that not one person made a sound. For over 30 seconds, it was complete silence. And then more silence. Not a sound was made for over a minute. And then finally, someone broke the silence by yelling from the very back of the crowd, a small boy that said these words, I believe in you, Farini. I believe that you can do what you're saying you can do. And then someone else said, I believe you can do it. And someone else said, I believe you can do it. And once and for all, the entire crowd is in unison cheering, I believe you can do it, Farini. You can just imagine the crowd on their feet, cheering and screaming, I believe that you can do it. And then finally, he rose his hand to silence the crowd. And he said, I want to thank you once again for believing in me. But then he asked one final question of the crowd before making his attempt. He said, which one of you is now willing to come up here and get on my back? Which one of you, which one of you people that are saying, I believe you can do it, is willing to climb up here and get on my back? And you know, I can almost hear those words leave my mouth and hitting you right in the chest. Because you know as well as I do that there's a big difference between saying you believe something and actually believing it. You know, people across this country today say, I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you. I believe you are who you say you are. I believe you can do the things that you say you can do. But let me ask you, what kind of belief do you have? Is it an intellectual belief? I said, yeah, I believe you can do it. I've read the Bible. I've heard the miracles. I've sang the songs. I believe in you up here. Or perhaps it's an inherited belief, an inherited belief that says, I've been raised in church. My parents told me this is true. I've been in church since the moment I've been born. I know all the things. This is just a part of who I am. Or do you have an intimate belief in Jesus, a pastuo belief, as said in the Greek, a belief that says, I believe in you so much that my belief has transformed who I am and how I act and how I see things. I'm a different person because of the belief that I have in Jesus. I'm willing to get on his back and to trust him with my entire life. You know, my prayer is that we would be people that don't just say we believe in Jesus today, but that we'll be people that climb on his back and we trust him with our entire life. You remember what Jesus said in Matthew 7, 22? He said, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and drive out demons in your name? perform many miracles in your name, but then I will plainly say to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. That's the difference between believing in Jesus and believing in Jesus. My prayer is that you will believe in him today. Listen to me. He is who he says he is, and he can do what he says he can do. So trust him today. Go all in with him and leave all the results to him. God bless you guys. Have a great day. Let me tell you what he's saying to us. He's saying, look, for us to be involved in missions, it means we've got to be conscious of people thousands of miles away that you will never see personally but that you ought to be concerned about. When you become a Christian, you become personally accountable for sharing the gospel with the whole world. If we don't get our mindset right, if we don't get our thinking right about winning the world to Jesus Christ, then this world will never be won. And the truth is that millions, indeed billions of people, will die without knowing the Lord. I don't think most of us have any idea the scope, the magnitude of what it takes to reach the world for Christ.
possible, but they're representing First Baptist Cleveland. And so these are people that we support in a major way. You provide their home, you provide their transportation, you provide their food, and you provide their ministry tools. Here, that's our heart, that's our passion, it's our desire, it's what God's called us to do. I believe the treasures in heaven, among other things, are the souls of people who come to Christ as a result of what you have given to reach them for Jesus. The Lord gave us an opportunity to plant a physical location, a ministry location in Alexandria, the second largest city in all of Egypt. 5.7 million people and it's 99% Muslim. And yet now we have a Christian presence that is sowing gospel seed all over the place and we're already seeing Muslim families leave that faith and come to faith in Jesus Christ. Today, they are worshiping with us. It's the preciousness first of the relationship, but it's also coming to the fold and watching these little faces innocently place their faith in a Lord they've not seen yet, right? And that's the beauty of it. That's why we keep going back. Every baby born of every mother in every family of every tribe of every nation in every corner of the face of the earth has a soul. And God, we don't naturally just want to give above and beyond what you've already asked us to give, but we know that it's exactly why you've given us the resources you've given us, so that we can be obedient and be a blessing in a way that you've called us as the church to be a blessing, to support mission efforts and ministry efforts around the world, to support people that are going to places that we will never have the opportunity to go, understanding that you've made them the mouthpiece and given them the gospel. That may be your challenge, is to not sit by anymore and watch people go, but partner with them, join them. You do that every single time you give and when you give to our global mission offering. Okay, this is going to be a great show. It's going to, even though Steve Hartline's joining us. All right? No, seriously, Steve Hartline with Mix 104.1. We've got Mayor Kevin Brooks. We have Sharon Marr representing Main Street Cleveland. And we have our brand new student pastor here at First Baptist Cleveland, Evan Holbrook. Yes, sir. Fresh in from Houston, Texas. Evan, yeah. I'm going to start with you, man. Welcome. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. It's glad to be here. There you go. Hey, he's already registered to vote. Welcome. He's good to go. Welcome to <laughs> He's a citizen of go, Cleveland, man. Tennessee. <laughs> That's great. And you're doing a great job with our student ministry, man. Thank you. Hey, let's Thank take you. it back just a little bit. Your first event uh, as student minister here, your first big event yeah. was right here on our campus, and we had a little guest uh, in town named Tim Tebow. How small. did that event go? Small, small, small guest. Yeah. It went great, man. <laughs> Phenomenal. We had so many kids from, from several counties, yeah. and every school... That, that I can name at this point, uh, come and be a part of it, man. I mean, kids came out on the lawn in the freezing That's cold fantastic. to see Tim. Tim did a, a phenomenal job of telling his story, delivering the gospel, and lives were changed. I mean, forever. Yeah. It was so cool. So That's cool. cool. It's pretty cool to have uh, an opportunity to have a Heisman Trophy winner on our campus and yeah. in our city. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's even better when he legitimately loves Jesus yeah. uh, and is trying to maximize every moment for the kingdom of God. He did that here. We saw 25 lives changed forever. Yeah. Uh, and I think it was a great event for our community, especially right now, man. It's hard to have an event right now, uh, but we're still moving forward and we're still doing everything we can to be aggressive, to do what God's called us to do. And uh, so kudos to you and your team, man. We're so glad that you're here. Thank you. And, uh, you know, you get to sit by Steve Hartline. That's Steve I'm excited. Hartline. I'm excited to be in the presence of celebrities. Oh, oh man. man. You are you're, wow. you're sitting next to... Kevin's right here. <laughs> the, the mayor. Voice, the voice of Cleveland. Hey. Welcome, my friend. Thank you very much. It's good to see you in a man's sweater. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why don't you tell that story real quick? Why am I saying a man's sweater? Yeah, well, I just thought it was a Tuesday. But uh, you normally talk to me that way normally. Uh, no, we had a little uh, football wager, as I recall, and I lost because my team did not understand the rules of the game, the Falcons. Yep. And they just watched the onside kick and didn't do anything. On the, your, your team, the Cowboys, just came in and grabbed the ball. They did. So uh, because of that, you, I said, I'll wear, is that my camera? I want you to put your hands on the screen and believe. Wow. Uh, listen, uh, anyway, I said, I thought he'd bring me a Cowboys jersey. He brings me his wife's 
cowboy. What was it? It was a sweatshirt. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it, was. it was bedazzled, <laughs> and it had something that said pink on it. Do you want to talk about that? It was from Victoria's Secret. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. When, when we made this arrangement, yeah. it wasn't a bet. What a bet. What a bet. No, no. It was an arrangement That's that it. said whoever loses has to wear the opposing team's gear. That's right. There <laughs> you go. We say jersey. We said gear. Okay. And that gear just happened to come from Victoria's <laughs> Secret and have sequins on it. And so you wore it and you yeah. were a good sport. Yeah. The well. Falcons are still bad and the Cowboys are still bad. I know. Here we are. <laughs> it's <laughs> terrible. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, they are. Right, how are you guys doing? Y'all doing okay? Good. Main Street Cleveland. Yeah. Tell me what you do with Main Street Cleveland. You are Main Street Cleveland. Well, I'm the executive director. I've been there for 15 years. I have a wonderful board and a great group of volunteers that makes a lot of things happen downtown. A lot of great things. Well, a lot of great things. Yeah. And downtown is downtown uh, because of people like you and organizations that say, man, let's make it great. Aren't Absolutely. you glad there's people in Cleveland that are saying, let's make so, Cleveland great? Make Cleveland great. Main Street does a great job. Halloween, uh, the tweet, uh, tweet, treat, <laughs> stroll. Yeah. Uh, they gave away 193,000 packages of M&Ms. Unbelievable. To put that in perspective, yeah. it's, wow. it's an enormous amount of candy. 600 cases. Thanks to our friends at m M&M Mars here in Cleveland. And Main Street does all that. They're getting uh, geared up for all the Christmas festivities downtown. So I'm very grateful. It's great to be in a city with great friends and partners like m M&M m Mars. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, I Loved gained 15 it. pounds my first year in Cleveland because of friends like Eminem Mark. And so uh, it's awesome. But man, it, that, that, it, that's always a huge event oh, yes. in uh, around Halloween. But also you have a huge event coming up in December every year as well with the parade. We do. You want to give us any updates on the parade? Sure. Um, of course, this year, you know, we all know what this year has been. And it's been so challenging with all the cancellations. So we have really worked hard to have our events and make them as safe as we possibly can. So we are going forward right now with the parade everything is on go um as far as you know as, as we know it today sure and uh we're making special concessions so that we are keeping people as safe as possible our route is three miles long so there's plenty of room to space out encourage everyone to wear a face mask it keeps your face warm besides keeping you mm -hmm. safe yeah. so we'll be distancing people in the parade as well and we've made special concessions for people in the parade we do we have safety meetings we go through a lot of work to make sure everybody's safe in that parade and uh, Dewey Woody, which I know is, is close to your uh, group here, keeping the church safe for you every week. Yeah. Uh, he has been the director of the parade as far as on street director for 25 years. Wow. So we're in good hands out there. And so we have, we have added different um, restrictions and, and making it contactless this year. So we're not handing things out, uh, keeping everybody just in the parade route. And it's going to be a great night. Hands off instead of hands on. I love it, man. I love it. How was your Thanksgiving? Fantastic. Sweet potato casserole. Is that your favorite part of the meal at Thanksgiving? We have a family member that puts frosted flakes on top of the sweet potato casserole. Hmm. So you can't imagine. Come on. That's what, that's what I said. <laughs> that sounds good. And <laughs> whatever you release on earth will be released in heaven. So I just release that. <laughs> what a so great idea. Forever, in eternity, I'm going to have sweet potato casserole. Man, that's awesome. What is the best dessert, best Thanksgiving dessert in your opinion? Best dessert is, uh, it's a butterscotch cream cheese dessert. Oh, it's really man. awesome. And it's light and really good after that big, big meal. Man, Steve, I can just see you daydreaming over here. You <laughs> still look like you're hung over He's from asleep. Thanksgiving. <laughs> what just happened? Ooh. What's your favorite Thanksgiving food? Ah, uh, that'd be uh, the stuffing. I'm, I'm a, I'm a big. Well, it's not stuffing. It's dressing. I was gonna say, are you a dressing or a stuffing? Oh, it's a dressing. I ain't, I ain't <laughs> the stuffing. That's so I, the dressing is, is, is uh, all the times my grandmother's recipe and. And uh, uh, Sister Littlefield's in heaven, but she left her uh, her uh, dressing recipe. She was a Pennsylvania farm girl, hmm. so uh, it is it's the highlight for me. So every there's no year. stove top in the heart line. I mean, no. there is if I'm in charge. Uh, yes, but uh, you know, here, children, I'll make toast. How about that? You know, yeah, but uh, definitely the uh, definitely the dressing. How about you, Evan? Favorite food, dessert, both. all the above. Let's go both. My mom's chocolate meringue pie. Now we're talking. Yes. Wow. Now we're talking. I mean, you're talking meringue this thick on top of the chocolate silk. Mm -hmm. Stop. My, I'm telling you, man, if she could bring it here on this Thanksgiving, I'd have it. I'd fly her in just for that. <laughs> man. And then outside of that, it's probably, you know, we all gather at my grandma's house, and uh, everybody brings a dish, and, and we all got, I mean, it's a small house. There's 35, 40 of us there, and we all gather around and eat, man. 
Nothing man. like those memories. Just y'all better mask uh, up. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> you got close quarters, man. Yeah, I don't know if that means gonna be there this year. But yeah. 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 well, we're turning the we're turning the corner. We're going into December. Let's talk about December in the city of Cleveland. Mr. Mayor, talk to me about December in the city of Cleveland in the year 2020. It's going to be a great December. Uh, the, the banners are already up thanks to Main Street and awesome. our Forestry Public Works Division, and the lights are going up. Uh, this year we're going to have a sort of a new emphasis on Christmas lights. We're going to light up downtown. We are the city with spirit. Yeah. And we've had a couple of months of our spirit being tested and our spirit being tried, so we're going to really increase the Christmas spirit in Cleveland, and I'm really looking forward to it. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. You know what I just remembered? You were our first guest on the first really? episode of First Daily. First, first, first. At the very beginning of the pandemic. I did not know that. We started in my house. Remember that? I do remember that. You were the first guest. How about that? Yeah. I just remembered that. Well, and here we are. It's honored to be back. We've gone from First Daily to First Weekly, and uh, hopefully pretty soon it'll be something new. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about what you guys are doing in December. I know it's a big year for you guys. Like you said, you've already put the banners up. You've got the downtown area looking awesome. It's going to be so beautiful this year. We are so excited because this, more than ever, we need some Christmas spirit, and this is the year for it. Uh, Friday night, 6 o'clock, we are lighting the tree at the big 45-foot tall tree at the old post office there on Broad Street with the First Baptist Church Choir. We'll be there to perform a uh, at least five or six songs for that night. Mayor Brooks, Mayor Davis will be there with Christmas greetings. We'll light that tree, and there's a great story about that tree. It was actually planted in 1966 by mm -hmm. Postmaster Robert Easterly, hmm. and it was part of the Lady Bird Johnson Beautification Program. So that tree was proclaimed the community Christmas tree in 1990 by a joint resolution of the City Council and the Bradley County Commission. So it's a very special tree near and dear to our heart and looks it's a, it looks beautiful. It's a challenging tree to decorate, but it, the Public Works does an amazing job with it, and it looks really awesome. Wow, that's cool. So we've got that. Last year, we added lights at First Street Square, which is down at Parker and First Street. We've got a 20-foot tree there. We've got an 8-foot reindeer, which is awesome for photo ops, and 8,000 lights on trees in that area. And then this year, thanks to Mayor Brooks's Christmas in spirit and enthusiasm. He has led us down a, a wonderful path, and we've been working together, and I'll let him talk about the, the new edition coming. We're very excited along the parade route. You'll see uh, three city blocks of Christmas lights all down the tops of all the buildings, and 30 trees, uh, sort of the Opry Land um, yeah. look. So That's awesome. we're very excited <laughs> about that, and, um, and we're very grateful to the friends and partners downtown Main Street Cleveland and the many business owners who have come together and said, you're right, this is the year that we need to chip in and, and raise the Christmas spirit. So I'm very grateful. Man, that's awesome. I'm one of those weird guys that I hate taking Christmas down. I'm like, just leave it up all year. I love the way that it looks. And I like the way you think. Yeah, I just, I think it's awesome. And, and kudos to, to you guys and grateful for your leadership just to, to, to take it to another level. You're right, this is a great year to add a little bit of Christmas cheer. Absolutely. And this year, just one note on the taking them down, we're leaving those through February 15th to get us through those uh, long winter days. So we've got lights up. It's their winter lights. See, that's winter. what I'm talking about. Yeah. Just take them down on J July the 15th. <laughs> July the 15th. <laughs> December's a huge month for you guys. Yeah. Not necessarily at the radio station. I mean, that's always busy. Mm -hmm. uh, but with what you guys do with empty stockings. So talk mm -hmm. about that real quick. This year, obviously, has to be a little bit different. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, as 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 this plays, uh, we have started uh, our empty stocking fund. We go till December the 11th. Uh, we, you know, started at uh, the Church of God headquarters. We finish at Life Care on the 11th. The changes we normally are broadcasting live from numerous locations. We're only doing two live broadcasts this year. The rest of it will be at the at our studios, and then uh, the party itself will be different uh, on the 12th of December. Obviously, we're not going to pack the children in and have a big party, so it will be a drive-through this year. They'll still get their gifts, the money donated uh, by the by the listening audience, but um, um, the party will will be missing this year. Just to, but we're still going to give give the gifts out and and have a great time of that. That's great. You know, in a season like this, things have to be different, but the needs are still remaining the same. And so, you know, kudos to you guys for still stepping up and saying, even though it has to be different, we're still going to do what has to happen to meet the needs of those in our community. And we I'm think sure the needs are greater this year yeah. than, than, than before. We started getting calls a lot sooner 
Uh, already uh, over 1,200 children have been registered, which is more than last year. So it, it's going to be a, uh, it, it's actually, the, the need is even greater. Wow. Well, when the needs are increased uh, for gifts and for, for on that side, also resources have to go up as well. Mm -hmm. So if someone's watching and they say, man, how can we give above and beyond to be a mm -hmm. blessing to empty stocking, how, how is the best way for someone to do this? Best way to go to the website, mymix1041.com. Okay. Uh, we'll have it right there, front and center. And uh, again, uh, our social media as well, Mix1041. But, but yeah, that's the best way to do it. That's All correct. right there. Well, I encourage you to do that, and you can do that right now. You can uh, visit that website. You can go to mymix1041.com. Uh, and there will be a place for you to click and to give. And 100% of those gifts go to supporting people in our own community um, that need to be blessed at a season where, you know, there's a lot of people that are, are in a difficult season right now. The pandemic hasn't been real kind to a lot of people. So uh, what a great opportunity just to, to be a blessing to someone that's in need. And uh, we're just trusting that the Lord will be able to use this like He always has, mm -hmm. uh, just to, to remind people that, uh, they are loved and they're cared for and there are people outside of their immediate family who want to be a blessing to their, their family. So that's right. Thank you guys for what you do. Man, thank this you. has been going on forever. You and, I mean, you started this when you were seven, <laughs> seven years old, I think. Is when hey, let me tell you my Steve Hart. Can I tell you my story? Oh, oh, oh dear. Oh, wow. so, All of a sudden it's a roast. <laughs> so in this 1985 or so, 86, I went to work for WCOE as a salesperson. I was right out of college you my age, I'm aging myself here, but so I would be coming in out of the building at, at, in that time, and I would hear this voice. It was strangely like Tom Rowland, but, but also not. <laughs> so I was like, what is happening? And I go up there, and Steve, at roughly seven years old, is sitting on mm -hmm. Tom's lap reading the news. Yeah. And so he would walk down from his grandparents' house yeah. and come and read the news. So he was, he was literally born into the radio oh, business. Wow. Yes, yeah. wow. Had no it choice. <laughs> no choice. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I remember that. You're sitting extra royal. <laughs> Loyalty. I, just, I knew it. I felt it. I'm just telling you. I was on America's Most Wanted. That's what it was. That's right. Anything else we need to know about Cleveland, Tennessee in the month of December? Anything else that's coming up that you're, you want to encourage people to be a part of? You know, we're so thankful that the Christmas spirit is alive and well in the city with spirit. I'm so thankful for the ministries of First Baptist and what you do throughout our community. You mentioned earlier that your choir is singing at the tree lighting and your huge presence with the Envy Stocking Fund and all that you do. And, and so we're, we're very thankful for what this church represents in our community. Well, we love our city. And I think it's, a, it's an honor to be able to, to do things like Empty Stocking Fund partnerships and like our choir. And I, I do want to invite people to be a part of, you know, the Christmas festivities. We have uh, our choirs doing a performance on this, on this platform several times in the month of December. We also have our annual Christmas Eve services. We'll will go on this year. We're going to have two of those on Christmas Eve, and we want to encourage our community to come together. We want this place to be a place of refuge for the city of Cleveland and beyond. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we see our facilities and our campus as a tool for ministry, and we want every person in this city to feel welcome and to feel at home when they're here. And so we know that we're not going to be the church to the whole city, but we want to be a church that blesses our city. Uh, and we, we really consider it a an honor to be able to partner with every single one of you uh, in doing uh, what God's called us to, to do and being the people that God's called us to be. And so, man, I want to thank you guys for coming on the show today. Thank you for what you do for our city. Thank you for making Cleveland better. Uh, and, um, man, I'm just speaking on behalf of a whole city that's grateful. Um, you know, this has been a weird year, but we're going to end it strong. And I'm excited about the month of December. I'm excited about being able to live in this city at the conclusion of the year 2020. And I'm even more excited about starting 2021 yeah. in Cleveland, Tennessee. It's going to be a great year. I just want to thank you guys for being on the show today. Thanks, Pat. All right, thank you guys for watching. Once again, this is First Weekly. We're here every single week, Wednesdays. And uh, if you've enjoyed the show, forward it to somebody else who may be blessed by the show. And if not, it's all good. We'll see you next Wednesday. Take care. We'll see you later.
Stop the Lord. 